Okay, so we're going to add on to the notes that we took Friday, okay? Um, we went halfway down the back page. Um, we're going to start there, and then there's I added some in there that are not written down, so you can write those um, either at the bottom or on another sheet of paper, whatever you prefer. Um, but on Friday, we learned that when you simplify radicals, that your radicand cannot have any perfect square factors, okay? So like 18 is not simplified because it has a perfect factor, a perfect square root of nine as one of its factors, okay? And so we talked about how to simplify that. We did several problems in regard to that. Um, then we talked about how to multiply, okay? You multiply what's inside the radical together, and you multiply what's outside the radical together, and then you simplify. Um, today, we're going to talk about how to divide radicals, okay? And um, divide and add. All right, so. Uh, another thing that you have to look at when you're simplifying radicals is that you cannot have a radical in the denominator, okay? And so this right here is not simplified because there's a radical 2 in the denominator. So what you have to do to get it out of the denominator is called rationalize the denominator. And when you do that, you multiply the radical by itself. Because when you multiply radical 2 by radical 2, you lose the radical, correct? Okay? And whatever you do to the bottom of a fraction, you have to do the exact same thing to the top. So we ended up with 5 radical 2 on the top, and then radical 2 times radical 2 is 2. Now, if you can simplify that radical, you would. But you can only simplify or reduce what's outside of the radical with each other, and then you can simplify or reduce what's inside the radical. Okay? I can't reduce this radical 2 with this 2. Okay? One's inside the radical, one's outside. Okay? Um, so, if we look at the next one, again, it's got a radical in the denominator. So what should I do? Multiply it by radical 3. And whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the same thing to the top. So I end up with 6 radical 3 on the top and 3 on the bottom. Now, can this one be simplified? Yes. You can simplify the 6 and the 3. Divide them both by 3, and I end up with 2 radical 3 over 1, which is 2 radical 3. If you have an entire fraction under a radical, then that radical is applied to both the numerator and the denominator. So this would be radical 25 over radical 121. And what do we notice about both of those numbers? They're both perfect squares. And the square root of 25 is what? 5, and the square root of 121 is 11. Now, the same thing here, that radical is going to be applied to the numerator and the denominator. But what do I notice first about this before I break it into two parts? This can be simplified, and they're both under the radical, so you can do that. Okay? So I'm going to reduce that, and that's going to be 7 over 5. And then you apply the radical to the top and to the bottom. And again, you can't have a radical in the denominator, so you rationalize it. Multiply the top and the bottom by radical 5. So we end up with radical 35 over 5. Can I do anything with that one? You can't because the 35 is under the radical and the 5 is not. Yes? Fill in the back. <laughs> That's okay. I'm kind of doing it different than I normally do. Okay. Now, on this one, basically the same idea. You can't have a radical in the denominator. Okay, so what should I do? Multiply the top and the bottom by radical 3. And so I end up with 9 radical 21 over, this becomes 2 times 3, which is 6. Can this be simplified anymore? Yeah. Okay, the 9 and the 6 both are divisible by 3. So we do 3 radical 21. Can 21 be broken down? No. Sometimes it can. I mean, sometimes you might have a number that can. We'll do one. I don't have one, but we're going to do one. I'll, I'll make one up here in a second. Uh, what about here? What am I going to do on the next one? Multiply by radical 2, numerator and the denominator. So we end up with 10 radical 6 over, this is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. And so that gives me what? By radical 6 over 2, because I can divide the 10 into 4 by 2. Okay, what if I had um, 3 radical 8 over.
over to radical three. What can I do here? Multiply the top and the bottom by radical three. So that's going to be three radical 24 over two times three, which is six. What should I do from this point? Huh? Radical 24 over 2, okay? You simplify here, right? So you get radical 24 over 2. Okay, good. Can that radical 24 be simplified? Yep. Yes, it breaks into what? Okay, so this breaks into the square root of 4 times the square root of 6 over 2, which is 2 radical 6 over 2. And so my final answer is what? Radical Now we had to do quite a few steps there. Okay, so so far we talked about how to simplify a radical, how to multiply. You can multiply any radicals together. Okay, you multiply what's on the outside together, you multiply what's on the inside together. Okay, uh, we talked about dividing. We just said the only thing you got to remember is you can't have a radical in the denominator. But when you get to adding, you have to be careful because you can't just add any radicals together. Um, you know, back when you were in pre-algebra, you learned that two x plus 3x was equal to what? 5x, right? Okay. Um, you also learned that 2x plus 3y was what? 2x plus 3y, right? Okay, it's like an apple and an orange. These aren't on your papers, so okay, these are the ones you have to add. So the you can't add the 2x plus 3y. It's like apple and an orange. Okay, so the same thing is true with radicals. You can only add like radicals together. They both have to be radical 2 and they both have to be radical 3, okay? So um, you add the numbers in front and then you leave the radical the same. So 3 radical 2 plus 6 radical 2 would be what? 9 radical 2. 9 radical 2. And okay, you come over here and look at this one. We have radical 2 plus radical 8. Those are different, right? But what do we notice about radical 8? It can be simplified, correct? And so if we break radical 8 into radical 4 times radical 2, we end up with radical 2 plus 2 radical 2. This radical 2, even though there's nothing in front of it, there's an understood 1, just like there's an understood 1 in front of an x, okay? And so if we add these together, what do we get? 3 radical 2. Radical 45 plus radical 20. Can we break radical 45 down? Okay. Breaks into what? 9 and 5. Okay. And so 3 radical 5 plus, you can break 20 into what? How about 4 and 5? And the square root of 4 is 2 radical 5. So see, what do we get? We do 3 radical 5 plus 2 radical 5. 5 radical Okay, can we add all these together? No. No. Well, what can we put together? Um, negative 4, negative 4 radical 3 and 2 radical 3. Good. These both have radical 3, so I can put those together. So that gives me negative 2 radical 3 plus 5 radical 2. Could I have written it like this? 5 radical 2 minus 2 radical 3. Would that be okay? Yeah, it's just switched. Just got to make sure the signs stay, um, stay the way they should. All right, we've got two more. Okay, now these, remember, you should be adding these to your notes. Okay, they should be written down. Um, you got 7 radical 20 plus 2 radical 18. What can I do here? When you break into 4 and 5, right? 7 times radical 4 times radical 5. The square root of 4 is 2 times the 7 that's already there, so that's 14 radical 5. How does uh, 18 break down? Square root of 9 times the square root of 2. The square root of 9 is 3 times the 2 that's already there. This gets radical 2. Now, can I add these together? No. That's all I can do with that. All right, last one. Radical 3. You can't do anything with that. What about radical 32? This, what perfect square factor does it have? 4 and 8. Okay. Okay. All right, let's talk about that. If we do 4 and 8, 
and we notice that one of those factors has a perfect square in it, then that tells us we didn't choose the largest one, right? So we could go and move up to 16 in 2. This might make our work too big. So we've got our radical 3, and this is going to be radical 16 times radical 2. The square root of 16 is 4 times the 5 that's already there. So that's 20 radical 2. And then what about this one? Radical 27. How do we break that down? Okay, so the square root of 9 is 3 times the 4 that's already there, so that's 12 radical 3. Okay, so can I simplify this at all? Yes, I've got 2 that have a radical 3 and a right, so I can add those together. So I get 20 radical 2 plus, if I add those together, what do I get? 13 radical 3. Alright, so any questions on adding radicals. Okay, now I noticed several of you just looking at me and not writing these examples down. When you go to college, do you think your teachers are going to give you the shell of the note? No, you got to be able to pay attention and write down and do it all along with it. I'm just trying to be nice so you don't have to, there's so much to write down in geometry, okay? But you got to learn how to take notes the real way too, okay? All right, uh, you got the worksheet today.